Good morning everyone. With my morning coffee today, I'm going to show you how to uh, post-process GNSS data taking with uh, MLID hardware. For this particular example, I'm going to use the data that I collected with uh, MLID RS Plus GNSS system, but what I'm about to say it's um, okay also for newer versions of uh, this brand. I'm going to use uh, their software, which is called MLID Studio, and I'm going to use a couple of use cases uh, that I, of data that I collected uh, in the field in Florida uh, earlier this year as part of a, a European Research Council project, which is called Warm Coast. I'm going to leave you a link here in case you're interested to uh, see how we use uh, GNSS for our work. Without further ado, I am going into the uh, description of, first of all, the basics of Emily Studio, then the description of which kind of uh, data we collected in the field, and then I'm going to show you how to post-process uh, these kind of data, which uh, I'm going to tell you it's mostly real-time kinematics data with uh, uh, a base station of unknown position and post-processing kinematics data uh, when I had a base station with no known position and uh, I could not get uh, a fix uh, in the positioning uh, in uh, RTK. So these are the two cases I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use today to show um, how we get precise data out of these uh, situations. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen. And here is uh, the uh, MLID Studio uh, software. Just before we get into it, uh, let me show you a few different uh, uh, panels that this uh, software has. One is the kinematic processing, which we're going to use later. Then the static processing for st uh, processing static GNSS data. Processing of drone data, if you have drone data that uh, and pictures um, sorry, and pictures you want to geotag from uh, your drone, I'm not going to use that and uh, stop and go with Amlet Flow, which is going to be uh, something else I'm going to use today. And in case uh, you use the U-Blocks data, uh, this is uh, uh, the, the Renex conversion. You need Renex files uh, to, to post-process, but uh, sometimes you can, uh, if you decide, you can save uh, U-Blocks from, uh, from uh, your software. So this is this is uh, what what you would use to convert them to renex so the very first uh, thing uh, i am gonna do is uh, use the static processing interface which is here i'm gonna explain you briefly what uh, i why i do need this so what I did when I was in the field was placing my base station uh, on a position uh, uh, of which I did not know the coordinates. So I was placing the base station and leaving it there, acquiring data for one or two hours. Therefore, the first thing I need to do is to establish a precise position of that point. Because I collected all the points, all the RTK points, uh, refer to that particular point. Point. So this is what I need to do first of all to uh, get a precise, a precise positioning. I need to establish the position of my base. So here we go. Uh, first of all, we go uh, looking at the static receiver data. I have my static receiver data here on my desktop. It's here, USA. I can take one data point that I got in Florida. Let me see, GNSS, okay. I have my base. I already organized my folders in this way, rover base, and this is the base uh, station from, uh, uh, from the uh, course network, which is, uh, which is uh, not too far away from, from, my, um, from my location. So here I have, three different bases. So these are three different uh, uh, places where I, I put my base during uh, that day. I'm going to take the first one and I'm going to select the observations. Now, one important thing is uh, uh, if you need, uh, you can put the antenna height. In this case, uh, I am going to um, process uh, all my data according to uh, 
to whatever elevation there was because that I have in the uh, in the rover files I have the uh, the position or, or the, the elevation of the antenna of the rover so I don't care about the antenna height but if you want the point on the ground maybe because you want to mark it for coming back successively then you should uh, then you should correct measure and correct the antenna height so uh, then for base I go to the data I download it for the course network I am not going to get into uh, the course network there are many um, many different uh, tutorials for this but basically this is a base station maintained by um, uh, I think this one is by the Florida Geological Service and the course network puts them all together so you see that here I have a um, uh, I have to choose if uh, I can uh, um, if I want to give an elevation and in this case I have the Renex header uh, position already automatically sampled from or already automatically inserted from the, the station what I can show you is uh, uh, a coordinates file from this station yes I do which is this one and basically it tells you which uh, uh, reference framework with uh, we we have and in this case we have an ellipsoid height i think it's the minus 19 one for, written in the minus 19.60 and this is the one the one i have here so this is the uh North American Datum 83 position. So every elevation we calculate is going to be referred to the North American Datum uh, 83 2011 ellipsoid. So this is just as a background to understand a little bit more about coordinate systems. So then uh, you need a navigation file and you can take it from the base station and uh, this is it. So once you inserted all this data what you can um, what you what you can do is just uh, going on and uh, process but before we do that i'm just going to show you some uh, um, some settings um, well first of all you can decide where to save the uh, which which name to give your your uh, data files uh, where to save your um, your files you can select uh, uh, the logs duration so you can also restrict the log, log uh, sorry the logs duration I need some coffee um, then uh, <clears throat> you can uh, uh, decide the output solution in this case we want one point so we want just to have the the best point that that we get um, filter type usually I use combined uh, but you can also put forward here we have a long observation time so elevation mask it means uh, um, the mask uh, what do I have to mask on top of the satellite maybe for trees etc I'm gonna keep everything um, everything as it is uh, but you can play out with these with these different elevation masks i think here we can delete safely by doing qzss because uh, and also probably galileo but i'm gonna leave it there because we were in the united states so i don't expect um uh, i don't expect Beidou to be uh, uh on the sky so i'm gonna save this and process so this is processing the data and basically this is uh, showing uh, this is showing uh, um, this is basically doing a, a positioning a precise positioning from uh, a correcting the position that I that I collected from uh, the, the my my base station to the course network base station so it's done um, first of all it tells us that the base station is 61.8 kilometers that's quite a lot uh, this is a single band receiver so it's quite a long baseline usually we want to be below uh, the 10 15 kilometers for uh, this kind of um, this kind of um, 
of data but uh, I would say there was nothing better nothing better around no better station around so that's okay I have a fixed 100% though, so it means that it found the fixed results and here I can have a look at what what I have as results so if I click on show results file then I can go into my uh, folder and see this file which is the pause file the positioning file which is uh, if I open it with uh, a text editor uh, okay this is the positioning the positioning file so you'll see that uh, you have a description of all the inputs, observation and outputs. Uh, I had about, uh, this is about uh, one, uh, what is it, one, uh, one hour and a half more or less worth of data collection, which is pretty good. The baseline is really long, so it, it was worth it. And this is the corrected uh, coordinates of my point. So 29.9, minus 85.3, etc and minus 19.04 uh, number of satellites this is the standard deviation north easting and this is um, the, the velocities etc so this is uh, this is my processed point so latitude longitude and height this is the the my processed base point now what i have to do is uh, use this new process bay point and correct the real-time kinematics data that I uh, collected in the field. Let me show you how to do that. So once I have these coordinates, I have to note them down somewhere because these are um, the coordinates that I that I need to correct uh, to correct whatever whatever data I was taking. So I have here in my rover files, I have my CSV file, which was taken in out in the field. So I can open one with uh, Excel, for example. There we go. And you'll see that it looks like this. So I'm gonna ignore all the, okay. So these are, this is a line taken from uh, ground penetrating radar. And you see that here I have longitude, latitude, helipsoid height, easting, northing, elevation, lateral, antenna height. And especially I have all the, all the uh, different, uh, different um, uh, properties but especially I have this which is the base longitude base latitude and base ellipsoid height which is the uh, uncorrected position of the base that I that I used uh, uh, when I when I was uh, when I was working uh, in the field so what I need to do is to uh, correct this base longitude latitude and height uh, uh, with uh, the new coordinates that I just um, that I just got so I'm gonna go here and first of all, I'm gonna make a new spreadsheet. I wanna work on a clean spreadsheet. I'm going to copy everything and I'm going to paste it in a new spreadsheet. So this is data, okay. Then I'm gonna add the tab here and I'm gonna put correct it. And I'm gonna put this here. Latitude, base, height, right. So I'm gonna just copy one, two, and three. Okay, so these three are the, the three that I want. Delete, and I'm gonna rearrange that a little bit. Okay. Then I go into the corrected and I take the data file that I, that I um, just uh, calculated with Emlet Studio. So, so I am going, oops, I'm going around here and 
take these three values longitude minus 85 tuck. you see that they're not too different but still there is a difference so we need to take that into account latitude minus 29 tuck. and height minus 19 this is not too far from the height of the of the base station minus 19 this is it okay now i have to calculate the deltas so the deltas means that i have to do uncorrected minus corrected delta longitude delta latitude delta ellipsoid okay the delta longitude is then this one minus this one delta latitude is this one pardon this one minus this one and the delta elevation is this one minus this one so now we have our uh, values here uncorrected corrected and deltas so we can say that the delta is uncorrected minus corrected this is what we defined as delta so to find the corrected we need to say that it's equal the uh, uncorrected minus delta and this in particular is what we have to put in uh, um, in our data file so we need to correct our data so this is our uncorrected data i'm going to add three columns here which is going to be the columns for our corrected data so i'm going to copy the headers here just maybe you want to rename them to something uh, uh, more evocative but for the for the sake of the example i'm going to leave it that as it is i'm going to highlight them in yellow so this is going to be equals uncorrected we said minus the delta longitude i want to put here a dollar sign so it will block the cell so when i expand it it's going to be always the same the latitude is this one minus again the delta for the latitude and again i'm putting the dollar sign and this is my corrected latitude and my corrected ellipsoid height this one minus this one and again i block the cell there we go so this is basically uh, my corrected longitude, latitude, and uh, ellipsoid height. So this is uh, all there is to know. I can do one other step because my uh, base station is quite far away from uh, the uh, official base station from course. So I'm gonna add here. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna add three um, new columns and. Uh, I am going to correct these sigmas, so these errors, because I think they must be taking into account the fact that I was far away from the course station. Now, uh, Emlid gives us a very uh, nice, in the documentation of Emlid, uh, it gives us a very nice uh, um, uh, table, which basically tells us what is the um, accuracy that we can reach. From this one, uh, you see that uh, in uh, RTK fix, uh, we can get, uh, if we are directly connected to the base, less than 10 kilometers. We were less than 10 kilometers from the base, so I think this is quite uh, quite good. But uh, from my from uh, post-process kinematic, which effectively is what we are doing for the, for the base at least, uh, it tells me that I have an average error of seven millimeters plus one millimeter per kilometer if my Rineglox bays are 
less than 30 kilometers from uh, the base. Uh, as, I, as you've seen before, I, we are 68 kilometers from the base. So what I would suggest is to add one millimeter for every kilometer and to add that to the error that we already have. So this uh, is sort of empirical, but it might help us get a better uh, handle on the final accuracy. This is then equal 0 0.001, which is one millimeter per 68 kilometers, which is the distance from the base. Of course, this could be uh, much, uh, much more accurate. I don't remember exactly how many kilometers we had, but uh, in the file it said 68 point something kilometers. I'm going to take this as a good one, plus the error that I already have. So it's about eight centimeters, which is, which is still pretty good. So I'm going to do the same for elevation. So this is your updated northing, easting and elevation root mean square. And this is valid for uh, all my points. So in case uh, this was uh, an RTK with a fix and then uh, this is valid for uh, all the points with uh, a fix uh, solution, uh, solution status. Now, uh, I should say that uh, this, is, uh, this is a quite, uh, quite handy um, way of doing this but uh, it can also be done via scripting the, there's uh, the possibility to do this via python scripts um, but i have seen that a lot of people likes more this uh, sort of um, spreadsheet processing uh, it's very easily scriptable in python or in r whatever you choose because this is this is just tables and small calculations on tables so this is very simple to script Sometimes it happens though, though that we are, when you are in the field, you might be in particular conditions, so you lose the fix, uh, you have maybe a float solution. This could be still good for a float solution, the error would be a little bit higher, but uh, the worst of the worst is when you get in single. So you basically have no connection with the base. But if the base keeps recording, then you can do what is called post-process kinematics. So. Basically, you are uh, establishing a um, um, yeah you are establishing a uh, processing, but afterwards. So you do not have a connection with the base and the rover, but you establish this connection ex post in post processing. Remember this; it's really important for this that both your base is on and recording Renex data both your rover is on and records Renex data, and then you pin points with uh, your Amlet, uh, whatever you're using to collect points with Amlet, and that is gonna give the timing to those points. So, <coughs> sorry, uh, we get into that and we try to see what uh, we can do in that kind of situations. Before we do that though, I have, I just realized that I don't, uh, I didn't check if I have an example, but I think I do. Um, so let me quickly check uh, if I have some points in single in my data files. So mm Okay, I found one. There we go. So you see that this is uh, again from uh, my Amlid points points taken with Amlid. I'm gonna again open it with uh, Microsoft Excel. Exactly the same as before. So we have, you know, longitude, latitude, ellipsoid height. But you see here that we have huge errors because these data were taken in single solution status. Now, I'm gonna show you how we can process all these single data points into something which is, uh, uh, oh, sorry. Um, 
so you see okay i found one and uh, let me show it to you this is it so this is uh, a same uh, like a similar file to the one i took before gpr data but in this case i had no uh, connection with the base in fact my solution status is single and i have large errors you see here four three and 12 uh, meters of error and lateral error mass of about six meters so these need to be post-processed one thing i did once i realized i was going in single i increased by a lot the static uh, the static time so i kept the gps fixed in the same place for about let me see this is about a couple of minutes 600 601 seconds and this is about uh, half of that so uh, this is about um, uh, 1607 1608 so it's um, four minutes uh, no sorry it's one minute at uh, uh, one point every half second i think so I took a lot of, uh, a lot, not a lot, but some time. I stayed static for some time with, with my uh, rover file. So how do, I, how do I treat this kind of data? There is a second, uh, let's say, a second uh, way of doing this uh, in uh, uh, MLID Studio, which is called uh, stop and go with uh, MLID Flow. The stop and go means that you are uh, doing exactly what I, what I was telling you before. So stopping with your GPS, staying there for about a couple of minutes, and then uh, and then uh, uh, going. So the very first thing I have to do though is uh, again process uh, the base station for that um, for that particular uh, for that particular uh, point. Now I'm gonna look which timings we are talking about because I took different data in that uh, in that day. So I'm gonna open with uh, Microsoft Excel. Gonna have a look here. So this is the starting time, 20 of January at 16:02 to 17:03 UTC minus five. Okay. So let's see which was the active base at that time. I think it was, uh, oh, sorry, row files. I think it was this one, UTC minus five, uh, 20 and 3, 20, 20, 4 is this one. Okay, one is in UTC minus five, the other is, is in UTC, but I think it's this one. So first thing I have to do again is to process my base station. Otherwise I don't, uh, I cannot, uh, um, let, me, let me close a few things. Otherwise I cannot uh, uh, be sure about which kind, of, uh, which kind of positioning I have on the base station. So I delete all this, delete all that as well. Could have kept it because it's the same, but I'm gonna redo it. So. I'm gonna go into row files. I'm gonna take the very last observation. I'm gonna go into the base. It's gonna be the same because I downloaded the entire day. So that's gonna be exactly the same. Uh, I'm just waiting that it takes the, the Renex position and the navigation file. I'm gonna take this one. Great. It's gonna give me the same values, but I'm gonna redo it just, just for fun. Actually, not the same values, but it's going to process the base. So I have a fixed point. I'm uh, a little bit closer to the base station, 49 kilometers. So that's that's pretty good. And this is what I what I get. Show results files, and this is this is what I get. So this is my corrected base position. I'm going to show you how I use it in a second. So what I have to do now, I go to stop and go with Emlid and it's asking me a few things. The first thing is asking me is the rover Renex file. So I have to go into my folder, go to the rover and go to the Renex file and catch which one is the one I want. I think it's the very last one. 
should be the very last one. Let's see if, uh, if we get that. Then I need to go into the base file. So the base file, but in this case, is the base that I just processed. So the base file is the raw file and it's the very... Uh, the very this one okay so uh, now here I have to change something so I cannot use the Renex header position because this is the uncorrected one what I want is the corrected Renex header position which is this one so I go here sorry I go here in decimal degrees and what I do is just copy and paste these values so I'm copying the latitude I'm copying the longitude and I'm copying the height Navigation Renex, uh, I can take the one of the base, uh, which is this one, open. And then uh, I can process uh, my data. So if these two are synchronous, let me quickly check that I selected two synchronous data points. 20.05 and this starts at 20.04, so this is good. So should be correct. Again, I can set up the settings but I usually keep everything everything as it is because Emily did a fairly good job at this so these are basically all my data corrected so point by point so this is really point by point what I was collecting but what I want is to have single points so I am feeding it the project from uh, Emily so I go into the um, into my files uh, and uh, I go into the rover, I go into the CSV and I go, sorry, into the original files and uh, uh, my file was the 19, okay, my file was this one. So you see that uh, uh, Emily is asking me what do you want to, to process and I want to process everything, fixed, float and single. If you have uh, a file which has mixed, uh, fix uh, and single, then you can take this out. In, in this case, I only have single inside that file, so I can uh, safely put them all. Uh, you might want to do, one thing you might want to do is if you have some, uh, some float and fix, you might want to process your float and see if you get better solutions and then compare the, the process with PPK and the float solution with uh, uh, radio connection. So sometimes this is a good, a good thing to do. So I'm starting and you see that now I have 38 points um, processed in here. So some are fixed, some are float unfortunately, but if I look at the result file, it's going to be here. It's another CSV. I open, I open it with uh, Excel just to show you. And you see that here, basically, what happened is that a new file was created. Again, we do not have uh, um, the solution is not single anymore. It's either fix or float. You see that the northing elevation and lateral uh, root mean square has gone down. Again, you can do the same thing you did before. So we did before. So adding to this uh, some error for the base uh, station. Uh, for the distance of the base station, which again is quite distant in this case. But you see that uh, it did a pretty decent job at uh, processing our, our data. Now you have longitude, latitude and ellipsoid, which are basically your, uh, your key values. And here, in case you want, you can also, um, you can also improve uh, or you can also change, as I was saying, the error on this, adding some error, but you have a pretty solid uh, data set to, to work with. So this is it for, for this uh, quick tutorial on how to process uh, MLID data. 
I think uh, uh, this is a very, very cool software. I don't get any money from them. Again, I don't get any instrument. I just bought the instruments. I like them. They're easy to use. Um, it's very easy with uh, these sorts of, uh, of um, Excel files to automate your process. If you don't want to do, if you have lots of files and you don't want to do the same process over and over again, you can automate your press process via scripting, either in R or in Python or whatever scripting language. It's just tables that you're going to play with once you have processed. Um, but it's very, very cool uh, um, to have this uh, sort of ability. I've been also experiencing uh, um, work in places where there is no close by uh, government maintained base station, for example, in Africa. What I did with uh, with Emlid was, or what you can do with any GPS, was to leave the GPS static for a very long time, more than six, seven hours. I left up to 24 hours and uh, to basically get a precise positioning um, from uh, um, correction with, an, uh, with uh, other systems, which are um, the precise point positioning systems, for example, the Canadian natural, the natural resources of Canada. Good. This is it. Uh, I hope it was clear. And let me know what you think in the comments. Ciao.